But with that being said, guys, we got a main event to break down. So let's do it. Let's not leave people in suspense. Adolfo Balato, he's back in the building. He was here last year. He got beat up by Vitor Petrino, mugged, and uh, he got sent back to the regional scene. But since then, he's done what you've expected of him, right? He goes back out to the regional scene, goes to LFA, gets the first round knockout win in front of the Brazilian crowd. Everybody goes crazy. Good stuff. Gets back in the good graces. And then Acacio Dos Santos, a guy that I believe fought on Contender Series. I know for sure he lost to Chidi and Jokowani. That was the Contender Series matchup, correct? So that matchup, um, Chidi absolutely mopped. It was the pleasure man. The pleasure man. Oh, the pleasure man. Oh, I'm bugging. Excuse me. But in any case, that was the 13 takedowns, just easy money. Uh, there's another guy who looks very similar to him that also got mugged on Contender Series. So that's what I'm thinking of. But Mario in any case, Souza. Yes! Thank you. You know who the I'm guy that was about. brought Basically in three the interchangeable times Brazilian yeah. jobbers. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So that's exactly what we're talking about here. Is he beat one of the interchangeable Brazilian jobbers and now he's back in the show. Um, so Bellato, here's the, the things that are positive. You look at the first Petrino fight and the, the most recent Petrino fight, he got way better. Right. Like he was clearly so much better in that second meeting between the two. He landed a big shot that rocked Petrino. He took his back, had a good position on him. But Petrino, the thing that stands out about him, if you guys rewatch that, especially the second fight, he's just so calm. There's no, you can't rattle this guy. You hit him with a big shot. He's like, he's literally like holding the wrist, like looking over at his corner, like, be cool. It's all good. Like he, he's like talking everybody else down. So Petrino just, you can't rattle the guy. Like this guy, Bellato really tried to get to him a couple times, tried to really hurt him. Here's the things I don't like about Bellato. Pulls guard. Not going to work in this weight class. I mean, if you're pulling guard in this weight class, you're asking to be hurt. You're asking to be knocked out. You're asking to get finished. Uh, and by the way, Petrino did a lot of good setup work in round one after a failed guard pull from Bellato. So big red flag. He continues to do that, right? Like he did that against, Acacio Dos Santos um, in the second round, I believe he got mounted, like put himself just flat back underneath. Um, so he makes mistakes, but his opponent had a heart attack, right? He was in cardiac arrest from round three on. So then he was able to rally back in that fight. I feel like Bellato slows down badly over the course of the fight. But if his opponent does too, he's willing to keep going. Like he's willing to just say, I'm real tired, but I'll push you into the fence. I'll try and, you know, hump your leg and take you down. So he definitely has some tools that he can use, but I just looked at him and said, like, I don't think the UFC wants Adolfo Bellato around. I don't think they give a rat's ass if they sign him or not. I think if they brought him in, they'd be bringing him in to cannon fodder him to somebody else that they really like. They'd be like, yo, Vitor, let's do it a third time just in case. Like, they'll be like, let's just see what happens if we run it three times. Like, they're just going to try and get this guy beat if he comes to the UFC. That's my humble opinion. But you look at a guy like Bellato, and he does have some skills. Like, he's definitely more talented than the average guy on the ground. In this weight class, I think he has a coherent idea of how to play jujitsu and attempt submissions. But just for me, there's fat on his game. You know, there's things that he can improve in every position. I think he leaves a lot of openings for his opponents. A guy like Taha, I think that that's just the wrong guy to do that against. For Taha, his biggest liability is on the feet. I don't know what the hell the guy's doing. He's mostly just ah, like just like swinging his arms kind of recklessly. You know, it doesn't seem like a lot of striking process. But I think he's taking this guy down. I think he's going to get a lot of takedowns. Um, I, I think that Bellato, too willing to go to his back, he's probably going to be like, oh, I have this guillotine, and then just be in bottom uh, half guard. You know, that's the the visions that I have of this fight. Murtaza, what I like from him is the consistency. He took him down against the fence, took him down, took him down, took him down, took him down, and then the fight's over. Like, he just will continue to press you and break you along the fence. I really like that from him. And he has good skills on top meaning he will go for ground and pound, but when it opens up an opportunity, he will take the submission. And when you don't give him the rear naked choke, he'll switch to the arm bar. So I did like a lot of what I saw from him on the mat, but he's a little bit small as well. He's not a very big guy. Um, Tala, Talha, excuse me. Um, so that was a little bit of my concern here. 27 years of age, very young guy, only six professional bouts, but has a lot of amateur experience. So fascinating matchup. Uh, I'm going to peek over at the odds as I kick it to my brother, Gordo. What do you think, my man? Oh, this is the moment of suspense. What, what are the odds telling you? <laughs> oh, don't mute yourself. Okay, we got Bellato plus 235, Taha minus 295. I mean, seems aggressive for the weight class. Um, but I do think that – I think Taha is going to be getting takedowns. You know, I do think he's going to get takedowns in the first round here. Um, it's an interesting fight. It's an interesting fight. Bellato's not a complete – 
uh, pushover in the wrestling or the grappling. I do think he'll have moments off his back here in the early going, but I don't think he's very balanced. So I, I actually do think he's getting taken down here in round one. Um, like almost Fair play. Yeah. That's, a, that's an opinion. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you'll come to realize after I talk about this one then, I have yet to place a bet on this card, for being honest, because it's not like I'm not hungry for action. We had a whole week off. I want to bet things, but there's some weird ones here. And, and truth be told, um, sounds like I may be a bit more bullish on Taha than, than you are, especially the way that Pierce is nodding up and down. Maybe maybe he's got some action we don't know about, but um, I do think Taha is, is pretty decent here. I don't think he's going to have the most prominent UFC career, but I haven't seen, um, let's say too much that I want to be concerned with in this matchup here, right? Uh, yes, the striking may be a concern, but uh, like the guy has some decent experience, right? Uh, he won IMMAF, uh, very good amateur record as well, and he showed that he has a decent well-rounded skill set, like his pace, like his pressure, like his ability to go out there and, and win these moments over someone like Bilotto. And I don't think Bilotto necessarily has that ability to sit down on his punches and punish Taha like someone may be able to do in the future. Now, sure, that ground game for Bilotto is, is serious. I think he's got some good transitions. I think that's his best attribute. But it's not like we're seeing many guys have the ability to pull this stuff off from, from guard and bottom position, especially at this division, right? It's going to be one where you have this guy who's going to be comfortable on top. I think Talha's going to have the, have the advantage here. And as this fight goes on, I've seen Bilotto slow down. I've seen, although he has the ability to push through it sometimes, he's not the same dynamic guy he is off his back. And I think as this fight goes on, he's not going to have necessarily the ability to go out there and contend as much so in this spot here when we have a guy in Bellotto who yes has a decent ground game yes has a decent jab but who throws naked kicks who can be taken down who's content off his back who does tire down the stretch I think the, I think the right guy's favorite here and, and that's just as simply as I put it I, I know Todd doesn't have the praise of strikes but the way that Bellotto's throwing these these naked kicks and the way that he's out there to be hit I do think the chin is able to be caught again and if it ever goes to the mat here although there might be some dicey moments for Bellotto I love the ground and pound from Tala. I do think he's very positionally sound, and I do think he has the ability to go out there and have some success. I do think he wins this fight at high clip. Now, if we look at that from that regard, and I am pretty bullish on Taha, and I do think that the win condition for Blotto is rooted in a round one submission, or maybe him just proving me wrong because he's he's proved me wrong before. Um, the under, uh, it's juiced. But I, I think this is going to be a very violent affair. I, I don't see Bilotto really going out there and, and competing in the later rounds. I think it's going to be him going out there, trying some Hail Mary submissions, trying to land things, maybe getting caught with something, maybe being taken down, and having Tala have, to have some success there. So I do like Tala. I, I do think he's someone we may be able to fade down the stretch. But in this matchup here, I do think he has the right style to go out there and take success. And I look forward to hearing why Pierce thinks I'm wrong. Because he, he's looking at me, man. He's ready to talk. I know, Look at that. He's ready to go. He's fired up in this spot. Pierce, let us have it. You know, Liam, stop Brazilian hate, man. C come on, man. Why why, why are we not betting Bilotto at these odds? I understand at the end of the day, Tahas, the guy Brian brought in, but I I got a crazy number on Bilotto. I got him at like 375, and I think he's playable up to plus 200. That's where I lined him at. It's just at the end of the day, Taha, wow, he looks the part. And you look at his topology, it's like, oh, he's fighting these high-level guys. You click on those guys' names, man. They are cans. They're literally fighting O and O guys, guys with losing records. They just have a good record, so it makes it seem like that he's fighting good competition. But at the end of the day, Taha, he's a bit unproven in my eyes, and I think he's fighting in the wrong weight class. He's a uh, he's a two-time IMMAF uh, world champion, which is an amateurs. He was a middleweight as well, so I feel like he should be fighting a middleweight, but. I guess I'm playing the number at the end of the day because when I look at Taha, or let's say for Bilotto, how do I think he wins? I honestly think Bilotto has better jujitsu. I think he's a brown belt. I'm not even sure what belt Taha is, but I can just tell Bilotto is fundamentally aware on the ground. I've seen him hit some nice half guard sweeps off his back. So, I mean, who's to say? Maybe he gets taken down, the, the Russian goes for some ground and pound, and he gets swept. What happens then? But, I, I mean, I wasn't as impressed with his offensive wrestling. It was more so uh, his defensive. He'd have a lot of these guys that would look to take him down, and he would counter that and end up on top. Where I, I guess I think they might clinch a lot, which probably would favor uh, Taha. I'm not going out here saying Bilotto should be the favorite, but I guess if um, Taha throws down, because I think that's a lot of Bilotto's path to victory, which is early. And I think Bilotto's, he's, he's not afraid of a firefight, man. I really think Bilotto could come in there, just throw bombs. And, I mean, we've seen... 
we've seen this Taha dude throw uh, throw bombs as well, and he's just winging overhand shots, and he's so reckless. His striking is horrible. I agree. It's with horrible, you and it's like if he's gonna play on the feet with Bilotto, I think Bilotto's striking offense is actually decent. It's just his his uh, striking defense for Bilotto is not good either, but. It's a volatile fight, man. I, I don't see why anybody wants to play minus 300 on this guy that hasn't proven himself at all. And then you got Bellato who he dropped Petrino. I mean, I think Petrino is the top five, top 10 future light heavyweight guys. So it's like losing to Petrino being his only two losses on his record. I, I don't mind that at all. And we, I mean, we've seen him go. The five round fight wasn't really uh, fun to watch, but I mean, maybe he was just a bit that more. round hesitant. two. Would you, would you concede to me that that round two is alarming? No, it I, was. I don't think that Taha is getting taken down by Acacio dos Santos. You know, no, right? I agree. That that was a bit concerning. But at the end of the day, I just I've seen someone that can go five rounds. Who the fuck knows if Taha can go two rounds? We haven't seen it. I I just don't know. So maybe he gasses down the stretch. But I just think it's a volatile fight, man. And for people to be planting their flag on a minus three hundred dude, that's really beating nobody. And he looks the part, but it's like, what what are we doing here, man? I I see all the value in Bellato. I'm prepared to look like a fucking idiot, but. I just can't justify not playing Bellato at these odds, man. It's light heavyweights, man. For all we know, this fight could be a fucking pick em. He did beat Anton Turkali in the amateurs, so you never know. Or maybe he's better I mean, than I've he did. No, I I'm mean, just fucking I've up. seen him slow down in amateur fights going three round, three three minute rounds. So it's like, dude, if he goes all heavy, because I the way Taha fights, he's gonna go fr from the jump. He's gonna go for the kill, and it's like I know Bellato. They grapple. I mean, I think Bellotto is capable of surviving. I don't think he's someone that's just going to wilt on the mat. So it's like, what happens if Bellotto drags him out of the first rounds? It could get a bit greasy, man. At the end of the day, we just don't fucking know at this level. He's not fighting good guys. I mean, amateurs, yes, but pros at 205, I, 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 can't, I can't justify this, man. I feel you for sure. Gordo, did you have some follow-up you wanted to give? Um, no, to, to, to me, this isn't one where I'm, I am looking to plant my fat flag. I, I think it is one that it has its own volatility, but at the end of the day, Bellotto's not someone who goes out there and impresses. I think he's limited. I, I think he has, um, a, a set of skills that can translate well entertainment wise, but, uh, it's, it's these things that, yeah, five rounds against a guy who I rate really poorly is not something I'm going to go out there and trust cardio-wise. I think someone who's going to go out there and allow him to be put on his back because we all know Bellotto is okay to be there is not something that I think is going to be a, a good matchup optic-wise. I, I think that there are tools that he may have the ability to have success with, but uh, although we're talking about, yeah, well, we've never seen um, the way that this uh, Talha guy is able to defend strikes on the, on the feet. Well, he, he hasn't had to. And it's not like Bellotto the guy to go out there and be like some world-class kickboxer. He's a guy who throws naked kicks in his own right, who, although is probably better technically, is just as poor defensively. And, uh, and sometimes you can land those really ugly shots on someone who is so reckless. Right. So, um, yeah, maybe a bit bullish of me to go out there and say I like a minus 100 favorite. Whoop de doo. I think he wins this fight. Uh, however, no, no shame to anybody taking a big plus money number. All power to you. Just uh, I maybe am discrediting Bellato's skill set more than I than I should here. So the thing about this fight for me, uh, I did take some notes on this. Um, I took notes on a bunch of the different fighters, but at the top, I got more down than I did on some of the later fighters. So uh, for Mirza Talha, I had big power, clinch knees, digs underhooks to pierce his point. A lot of guys were trying to take him down, and he was doing a good job defending takedowns, digging underhooks, turning sideways, and also using those uh, to set up counter wrestling opportunities, which is something I like to see um, for somebody that wants to get takedowns. Let the other guy initiate it so that way you can get an easier takedown. And that's what he did a lot of. Um, so I said capable of getting takedowns and passes, but susceptible to low kicks, very much so. Um, in most of his fights, he comes out and gets hit with a booming outside low kick to start. Like that's how his fights start. Uh, typically speaking, he can be blown off it, his feet by a well-timed double leg. That's that's a problem against Bellato because I do think Bellato, you know, he's not very good defensively with his uh, wrestling. I think he's easy to barrel over. It's 205 pounds. He could definitely level change and take this guy down. So that for me is, is where Taha becomes an open question. Most of the time he's having a lot of success in the grappling. What happens if he's the nail in those positions? Does he have the same kind of resolve to get back up to his feet, to keep working, to, to deal with adversity? You know, I had mentioned on one of the other uh, MAGA meds that we talked about earlier today, I've seen him get rocked with a punch and then shoot the takedown. 
I want to know that you can deal with a fight going sideways and get back on track and get back onto your script as a guy like Ozzy would say, shout out Ozzy P. But like, that's what I want to see as a guy who's like, whoa, I just got my brain scrambled. Let me get back to winning positions. And I'm not sure about that from this guy. So for me, it's not enough knowns to justify the minus 300 personally. Um, although I do think he should be favored. Uh, it's probably a, a touch steep. I think he's going to win this fight. I would probably put it at like a minus 250 true odds, minus 230. So I don't know that I would get to the dog either, but I, I do feel like this is probably just a more volatile. I think light heavyweight is typically more volatile than people um, like to think of it as. We think about the heavyweight fight between Velasco and Gaziev. Gaziev, I thought, looked way more proven. Um, you know, had fought 10 professional bouts, and he almost gave up his back to Greg Velasco, who's like a regional level guy from the Northeast. So, again, just a, a couple of things to keep in the back of our mind there. But um, I'm fascinated by this card. I think that we should have some good action. Bahrain's got three chances, right? So, You'd think theoretically they get at least one of those across the finish line, but an international night of fights. I'm excited about it. 